Those first three pieces kind of took us through the big picture of music history. We started in the classical period with Beethoven and a, and a traditional arrangement of the piece Hallelujah, a traditional uh, a church type of anthem text. The second piece was a romantic piece by Johannes Brahms, who was a romantic composer, and that was originally written in German, but this transposition, this arrangement was written in English. And then the last piece was a more contemporary 20th century piece called Onata Luz. So three different, three different time periods, different languages in a sense, if you think of the third, the middle one as in German, but a good set of music. This next one's completely different. It's a traditional spiritual called Keep Your Lamps, and it's done a cappella, four parts. It's been a good piece for them. They actually got this piece about two weeks ago, so they haven't had a lot of time to learn it, but they've taken hold of it very well, and, and I want to push them a little bit and see what they could do. So uh, Keep Your Lamps. this year. Uh, this group, this varsity choir, is the biggest varsity choir I've had since I've been here for the past six years, and it, it's, it's, it's rather large in comparison to, to varsity choirs even before then. It's 62 members strong when we're all here, and it's even been a struggle to find robes and stoles for all of them. I had to dig deep into the back corners of wherever you want to think of back there in that music building and find some of these stoles and robes that actually fit and look nice. And, so it's, it's a good problem to have, but um, it is great to have so many singers involved in the choir program to see this group especially grow. Um, uh, it, it's a real treat for me to get to work with these young kids every day. Part of that growth and part of that, um, part of the success that comes along with that is the, the more people you have in a choir, the, the easier it is to start to feel like a family and to start to sing well. And this group has really done that ever since the first couple of rehearsals, the first couple of months, this group has really gelled. And it's been, like I said, just a joy to work with them. And the, their year kind of peaked when we went to music contests. And I knew that they had a good shot at getting the best, which is called a superior rating at music contests. And that's something that Varsity Choir doesn't usually do. Uh, it happened once before in 2010. The Varsity Choir got a superior at music contests, but that's really the only time that I can find in my, in my records that the Varsity Choir got superior until this year. And this group did get a superior rating at music contests. Um, and they sang, yes, yeah. impressed upon them how big of a deal that was for a young choir like them to get superior. Uh, most schools in our area are lucky to have one choir. We're fortunate to have two high school choirs, uh, both of great quality. And, and for them to get that rating, I think, was a huge uh, chip on their shoulder. And I think they're pretty proud of that. 
And it also was the first year that I can find in my records that both the acapella and varsity choirs got superior. We both went to the contest and, and, and took superior ratings. So um, that's another thing for this group to be proud of, that they can stand toe to toe with some of those other choirs. Um, the, first, the first piece they sang at contest was O Nato Lux, that Latin piece they did after the, the May night, the, the Brahms. They did that Latin piece. And then they sang this next piece, Dreams of Thee, which has been a piece they've latched onto ever since we first started looking at it way back in September. And every day it was, can we sing Dreams of Thee? Can we sing Dreams of Thee? Can we sing? It's just always, every day, they, all they want to do is sing this song, which is great. Um, they really did find their voice with this song. This was the first song that they were able to really sing through all the way and, and be passionate and, and musical with. And it's been a great piece for them all year. So I chose to, to highlight it in this concert because they got a superior rating and they love it so much. And we have a small group of soloists in the beginning. Their names are in the program. Uh, this piece is about a dream, a dream of a young man who is searching for his love and in the dream, he is with her, and it's a wonderful place out in nature with, with trees and grass and, and the air and all these wonderful things about young love. But then at the end of the song, he wakes up and he realizes that he can't be with her. And it ends on a kind of ambiguously sad sound because the dream has ended and his love is gone. Dreams of thee.
Before they sing their final number, I want to take a quick moment to recognize some individuals within this choir. At music contests, not only do we perform as a large group, but we also perform as individuals. And the kids have the option, I always tell them around de December and January, I say, hey, if you want to sing a solo or a duet or a small group at music contests, we'll start working on it and you perform for a judge, just like the big group does, and the judge critiques you and, and educates you and gives you a little mini session uh, while you're there. And we had some brave souls from this group step forward and, and take on that challenge. It's a lot of pressure, especially for ninth graders, and we had uh, four ninth graders step up and take that challenge, and they all did very well at music contests, which bodes well for their future should they continue to keep doing so. So I'd like them to come down because they get a certificate, and I'd like them to be recognized here tonight because this is kind of our awards finale evening. So the first uh, of those individuals is Joshua Bauman, who's a ninth grade baritone, and he received an excellent rating for singing um, Beautiful dreamer, that's what he said. <laughs> the second individuals, it's a duet, were Khalees Myrie and Kate Barnes, and they received an excellent rating for singing a duet from the musical Jekyll and Hyde called In His Eyes. The final individual was Benjamin Harunen, a freshman tenor, and he received a superior rating for singing the song If I Were a Rich Man from the musical Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> it's always great to have individuals sing as soloists because it teaches them so much more about being musical. The final piece that they want to sing uh, for you tonight is called Go Down Moses, which much like Dreams of Thee has been a piece they've latched onto and they love singing this song. So enjoy the spiritual of Go Down Moses. Just fine, just look what you have in your hand. 
next two pieces on the program uh, start with a piece called Famine Song, which some of you might recognize. We sang this uh, in the fall. This is one of our pieces we started the year with. And then the second piece is also one of those fall pieces called Dire Temps, a French piece by American composer Morton Lordson. And both of these composers are still living. Matthew Pelton is a choir director down in the Twin Cities, and uh, Morton Lordson teaches composition in Southern California. And so their music is very relevant and it's very popular amongst choirs all over the country. The reason we're singing these two pieces is similar to the reason the varsity choir sang those two pieces for music contests. These are the two pieces that they sang at contests and received a superior rating. They were the only choir in our entire section, the north section of 7A, that got all three superior ratings from all three judges. Uh, the rest of the choirs did not get that, so that's a pretty big accomplishment for this year. And these two pieces were the pieces that they sang at Moorhead, uh, Moorhead, Minnesota, when we traveled in January to the Concordia College High School Choral Festival, uh, where if you've come to some of our previous concerts, you've heard about this, we were invited, this group, the acapella choir, was invited to sing at that festival as part of this big high school extravaganza that they have. And they invite four high school choirs from the state of Minnesota, and this year uh, our acapella choir was, was, uh, was lucky enough to get one of those invites, and they sang these two pieces. Yes, that's another big accomplishment for this group. And it was a special time for me because both of my teachers, my college director obviously uh, was there, that's where I went to college, and my high school choir director is now one of the directors at Concordia College where he went to college. They were both there in the audience listening. So. It was a nerve-wracking moment that these kids did me so proud. I was very proud of the way they performed, and, and it was just an exciting moment. It's one of the memories I'll keep with me forever uh, with this group, and, and I want to share, we want to share those memories with you tonight. So Famine Song, followed by D. Ray Tall.
This next piece, before we take a little break and change gears a little bit, is a, is a Brazilian piece, as your program tells you. It's called Mulher Rendera. And when we first got this piece, I was a little apprehensive. It's kind of a, it's a challenging piece, rhythmically, language-wise, who speaks Brazilian, right? Um, and musically, it's, it's a tough piece. I found this piece this summer in a, in a, a, a choir of choir directors. Uh, every summer I get together with about 200 of my colleagues from the state of Minnesota, and we have a week-long choir nerd fest in the middle of Minnesota somewhere, and, 
and we get together and we have a big choir. What better way to learn new music and learn new techniques than actually to sing under the direction of somebody else? And this is one of the pieces that we got to sing. It, instantly, every director in the room, I could tell everybody was going to do this piece this year. Uh, and it's a great piece, and you'll hear why. Uh, about a week ago, though, I, I told the choir, you know, we're not going to do it. It just it wasn't coming together, it wasn't happening, and they kind of mumbled and grumbled and groaned, and they really liked this piece. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought, oh, I came back the next day and said, okay, we'll do it. We gotta work it, we gotta get the, we gotta do it right, we gotta really knock it out of the park. And, and boy, has the last seven days been wonderful for this piece. It's, it's really come alive. And, and I'm actually gonna make my percussion debut with the Egg Shaker. Uh, I'm gonna step back and let the choir sing a little bit and, and enjoy this piece. We are in Dara. The text is about a man named Lampeau, and the text is this, basically. He's saying, hey, you lace maker woman, show me how to weave a basket, and I'll show you how to court. <laughs> so it's all about this really chauvinistic guy named Lampeau who is flirting with all these women in this little Brazilian town as they walk by, and they kind of blow him off like, oh my gosh, this chauvinistic guy, whatever. And he's persistent, though. You're going to hear him say ole a ton of times in this whole piece, which is, hey, you, you know, you know we ate and down.
change gears and kind of do a, a few awards things before they come back on and we do um, our senior song and, and these things that kind of put a cap on our year. Um, every year, the choir is able, choir members that have been in two years of high school choir or more are able to letter in choir. And what does that mean? Good question. They have to earn points in order to letter. They can get points for any sort of thing related to choir extra to what they do in class. So taking private voice lessons, singing contests, um, auditioning for honor choirs, being in the musical, being in any community choirs or extra choral events, anything that relates to choir extra to their daily rehearsal time, pretty much they can gain points for. However, it's not easy. They have to get uh, a 25 points next year that's being raised to 50 points. Uh, but they have to get 25 points this year to letter. And if you look at the insert in your program, you're going to see that quite a lot of kids in this choir do, in fact, letter, about 20 of them this year, uh, which is great. It's great that these kids take initiative and they take advantage of all the extra opportunities that they have available to them. So I want to recognize them tonight. I'll call them each on stage, present them a certificate, and please hold your applause until they're all on stage. We can recognize them all together as one group. And I told them to raise this issue back there. So the first one, and this is in alphabetical order by grade. So Katrina Bertucci, come on down. And I'll just read these off. Angel Carlson. Abby Fink. Aaliyah Hendricks. I suppose I could put the microphone on the other side. Cole Jensen. Jenna Kingsley. Jasmine Levisto. Kim Plunkett. See how helpful these kids are. <laughs> Courtney Ruzik. Lauren Seaman. Maria Stokes Serpenic. Lauren Twight. Those are the seniors. Baker Felix. Tasha Mazio. Samuel Sari. Those are the juniors. Kelly Hainonen. Brecklin Palace. And Tori Thompson Wiedemer round out the sophomores. These are the kids that come in every day and do extra work and, and really take advantage of every opportunity they have available to them in the choir program. Congratulations. <laughs> Another award I want to present here tonight, it's also going to be presented to this individual tomorrow at our co-curricular awards assembly where all the extracurricular activities get to present things like letters and certificates and awards and scholarships get, get called off at tomorrow's assembly as well. But I want to recognize this person tonight, I think this is a good appropriate place to do this. The class of 1974, anybody in here? Um, they uh, obviously were very passionate about music and they had Dallas Franson as their director and Larry Groves was also around at that time. Um, so passionate, in fact, that the year after they graduated, they started giving out a scholarship, a vocal music scholarship called the Class of 1974 Vocal Music Award. And we've got two plaques in the choir room that have several names all the way from 1975 until this year, 2014, 39 years of giving out a scholarship to a senior. Uh, in the past, in the 70s and 80s, they gave out several, three or four a year. And as years have gone on, that's dwindled, and now we give out one award every year. And I get a call every spring from, from Carol Hendricks, or the representative from that class, and they say, who should get this award? And I have to think, okay, well, who should get this award? Of all these great seniors I have, who should be the one that gets the scholarship? And I thought a lot about it, and I think this individual has really um, shown a dedication to the program not only because she has been involved all six years, but because she has done everything she could, whether it be the musical, music contest, auditioning for solos, anything that I ask or that she, that is extra, she has, she has taken advantage of. And, and I couldn't think of anybody more deserving than the Vocal Music Award for the class of 1974. So Lauren Seaman, please come on out.
And before I bring our group on to sing, I want to give out the music contest certificates to the individuals from this choir that also sang at music contest. So we had one individual receive an excellent rating at music contest. She sang, she's a sophomore here at Virginia High School in the acapella choir. She sang a, a, a solo from Annie Get Your Gun. She sang I Got the Sun in the Morning, Megan Andrew. And then we had several individuals receive superior ratings at music contest as well. Um, the first is a baritone senior, Cole Jensen. He sang a solo and received a superior rating for the second, third year in a row now. <laughs> this young lady has had a great voice ever since seventh grade, and when she wanted to sing uh, a solo contest, I said, yippee, Brecklin Palace, sophomore. <laughs> These next two individuals have been two of my rock solid altos from day one. They sang a duet, uh, The Stepsisters Lament from the musical Cinderella, Kelly Hanonen and Lauren Twight. And isn't she the popular one? Lauren Seaman received a superior rating at music contest as well. These next two sang a duet. They sang a duet from the musical Annie Get Your Gun called Old Fashioned Wedding, Kennedy Niscaburia and Tasha Mazio. And then to round out this group of excellent singers, we had a small group, a small ensemble, an ensemble we have of 10 singers, whom you're going to hear in just a second. They sang the piece that's in your program called Requiem. So we have sopranos, Mackenzie Phelps, Jenna Kingsley, Abigail Fink, altos, Lauren Seaman, Kelly Hanonen, Lauren Twight, tenors, Baker Felix and Sam Sari, and baritones, Cole Jensen and Candy Niscaburia. After that, we'll bring our seniors on stage with their senior song.
Now, this time I'd like to bring our seniors on. We have 18 seniors this year. Uh, it's a great group of kids. I'm going to talk to them later in the concert, towards the end, but they're going to come on and sing their senior song. This year they chose a great song called, well, the title's kind of awkward, Finale B. That seems kind of strange. But in parentheses it says, No Day But Today. There's more seniors than that. <laughs> um, it, in parentheses, you see the name No Day But Today. This is from the musical Rent, and this is the end of the show, Rent. If you've ever seen the movie or the stage production of Rent, this is the second finale, Finale B, where they bring in some music from the previous part of the show called No Day But Today. And it talks about how the first line you're going to hear from the altos is, there is no future. And the men say, there is no past. And the sopranos say, thank God this moment's not our last. It's all about living in the moment and thinking about right now. There's only us. There's only us together. We are strong. We have to support each other, love each other, and be with each other uh, in order to make it through this crazy world. I think it's a very appropriate piece for a senior song. And, and they've been singing really well with this piece. Finale B and our seniors.
popular saying that's been going around, and I know it's your favorite, hashtag Craig Slay. <laughs> It's your kids that make that, that, make that happen. Um, this group of seniors is especially important to me. Uh, six years ago, when I was 23, no, scratch that, 22, right out of college, uh, barely old enough to, you know, do adult things. Uh, <laughs> I was thrown into this classroom with 85 seventh graders. 85 seventh graders. I thought, oh my god, what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't know how to do this, and um, it was a very difficult year. And the kids on the stage that were in that class, which there are eight of them, the eight of you raise your hand. Yes, eight of my lifers. Yes. <laughs> Thankfully, the percentage of those who are staying with us has grown, but you know, um, it was a huge learning experience for me. And this group, those eight, but all these seniors, I don't mean to uh, separate them by who was there that first year, but all of these seniors will be forever uh, uh, implanted in my brain because they were my first. They were my first group of seventh graders when I came here. And, and as much as I like to hope they learned from me, I learned uncountable times more from them. Uh, I'm still learning. Teachers are always learning. Um, but I learned so much about how to be a teacher and how not to be a teacher um, <laughs> from these kids. And, and they have made such a profound effect on my life. And my goal, my hope, is that they have found some joy out of it as well. And I think you can see that they have. Um, but I look at these kids all the way down there. And I look at them, and I see the last six years of my life. I don't see you know, these I mean, you, you're their parents. You've seen them grow up more than I have. But I've seen them every day for six years. I did the math, it's over 1,000 rehearsals that I've seen these kids. Uh, 28 concerts and 95 individual pieces of music. And throw in that, a marriage, you know, a brand new life. All this stuff that's happened in my life in the six years, and I look at them and I see that every day. And it's just such a special thing for me. And to say goodbye to them, I don't know how it's going to happen, but you know, they're going to go away by next Friday. Um, but I, want, I wanted to share that with you. That, that I see so much of myself in you, and I thank you for all of the things that you have done to help me grow, and I hope that you can carry these memories on with you in the future, and, and hope that you grow into wonderful young people, which you already are. And I can't wait to see the great things that you do. So, 
Can we have a round of applause for this? senior class. It's called Omnia Sol. We sing it. It's in English and there's some Latin text as well. The translation of the Latin text is in there. It's all about saying goodbye, but letting your heart be stayed is the word, uh, or an old word for the word stay. So even though we may separate, we may say goodbye to each other, our hearts are still together and we still are, are connected in some way.
votes on two members of their choir, uh, seniors, to uh, receive an award called the National School Choral Award. And this award is given out, like I said, to two seniors, one boy and one girl, who have demonstrated nothing but the best within the choir. And, and it, it's picked by them. I have no influence over this. I just tell them, pick who you think deserves the award that shows that who you think is your leader, who you think is a representative of your choir and, and of what it means to be in choir here at Virginia High School. And there's a plaque in the choir room with a whole list of names. I started this my first year. I look back on that plaque and I think, oh my gosh, all these great people. In addition to all the kids that have come through here, this is just a way for these, these, these individuals to, to pick someone they feel deserves to be honored as an individual. And it was um, not unanimous, but uh, pretty, pretty weighted heavily. There were about, of those 18 seniors that you saw up here, about 10 of them had at least one or two votes. So you can see just how much the younger uh, members of the choir think of their senior leaders. But there were two that came out ahead, and I couldn't agree more. I, I, every year I'm just amazed at how accurate the choir is at picking kind of two of the leaders within this group. Uh, so for the women, Abigail Fink, and for the men, Cole Jensen. Have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you back next fall for another great year. Um, but first, we're going to finish with a great spiritual called Way in the Water. And you're going to hear a couple solos. Senior Jasmine Lepisto and Senior Cole Jensen will have some solos throughout this, this high-powered, fast-paced piece.
Pate, 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 Pate,